Hey, hey, it's John Hope Bryan here, and I'm here with somebody I have really come to know over the last three years because he is the engineer for all of my audiobooks, and I've come to respect him and admire him, and I even like him. His name is Dante Hodge. <laughs> Thank you, sir. My Thank pleasure. You. And this is our first handshake in the free, yes. in this COVID world. I know, right? We, we do we, have hand we, sanitizer we, right And, and we got, I got, I got my mask, mask, mask right, right, right there. Every time I walk in here, my man, I don't even know what he looks like until now. He's been wearing his mask. <laughs> so my point is we're, we're practicing social distancing, and we yes. encourage you to do the same. Right. So I just wanted you to, to know this guy's incredible story. So um, I, my, my, one of my gifts is asking questions. I asked Quincy Jones, how'd you get so smart? Mm. He said, I'm just nosy as hell. I want to know everything about everything. Quincy Jones is smart. I'm not sure I, I even fit anywhere near being in that realm of people, but I no. want to get there one day. No, in your lane, you you know, you, you have that same sense of passion and excellence. I, yeah. I got really frustrated with Dante because this is my second time being in the studio. And it's like we're in here for hours recording this audio book for my yeah. new book, Up From Nothing. Go, go pre-order, by the way. Very good book. Out in October. Thank you. Yeah. And... It means a lot for somebody who records a lot for people. Yeah. And, you know, he doesn't let you get away with anything. Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm on a roll. He's like, stop it. You know, the, his favorite phrase is, let's smooth that out. Smooth it out. Translation, you just screwed it up. <laughs> do, this, do the line over again. Um, but you know, as much as, as frustrated as I am with him, he's right. Like that, But love is work. Mm. Non-love is laziness. Anti-love is evil. Evil exists, but it's very rare. Right. right? Yeah. Most people are just lazy. Yeah. Intellectually lazy, physically mm -hmm. lazy, financially yeah. lazy, spiritually lazy, emotionally right. lazy. They don't want to do the work. They want somebody else to do it for them. And that is my biggest pet peeve, laziness. Laziness. His brother ain't lazy. So let's tell your story real quickly because I, I want them to hear you, not me. Okay. So I was fascinated by, so you grew up in the, Cari well, your, your mother's Caribbean, your dad is African American. So, okay. So actually... So my mom and my dad are West Indian. So okay. my dad was born in St. Kitts. My mom was born in St. Thomas, United States Virgin Islands. Okay. And I was born in Maryland, but my mom wanted me to come up in West Indian culture. So I left at age three to go live with my grandmother in the British Virgin Islands. Gotcha. And I lived there my whole life. My mom eventually moved down, and I lived there until I moved at 17 years old to come here and go to school. So. And your dad you, and your dad was in your life, but he was here in yeah, the States. Yeah, so my dad was in my life. I saw him once, sometimes twice a year. I would come and spend summers with him. He lived here in Georgia, between here and North Carolina. I would come and spend summers with him. But so, so I don't have the typical story of a dad that wasn't present. For a black man. For a black man. But because he was present, and I like to make that very clear because I don't yeah. like people forcing that narrative yeah. on me. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't in my life every day. So the I, influence in your, your life was your mom. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, and just where I grew up too, mm -hmm. like gr growing up in West Indian culture is just so different. You know, even right now with some of the race things that, that we're dealing with in this country, some of it I can relate to to a certain extent, but a lot of it I just can't because we aren't the minority where I come from. Right. You know, we just love on people different. It's just a, it's just right. way different. And I, I'm, I'm in my book, I'm dealing with this whole situation of how Caribbean blacks and African Americans have a different energy, a different yeah. flow, and as a result right. of that, have a different struggle. Yes. And Af African Americans have a much deeper burden struggle because we had slavery upon us for hundreds of years after that was done. Right. Yeah. In the in the Caribbean islands. That's another video for another time. Right. Uh, but let's get into it. So your yeah. mom was was on your rear end with love and discipline, right? Yes. So my mom, man, you know, I. What's her name? So give her some. Claudia. Love. Mom, Claudia. Claudia. Did a good job, um, Claudia. She, I, I call her a superstar just because when I look back on my life and the influence she had on my life and how I turned out because of the things that she instilled in me, I really just give her all the credit. You know, she she found a way to love on me, be be hard on me, and still give me the freedom to to kind of make mistakes and and learn and and be, just be a teenage boy. But then she also, you know, you know, good old Caribbean parents, she she also she was, she was in it. She was also in it when she needed to be and you know, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I would say influenced me is man, to be honest, she she just believed in me doing whatever it is I wanted to do. Her only rule was, well, she had two rules. My mom had two rules. She was like if you bring home good enough grades, right, you can get whatever you want. Right. So, so right, right then she she showed me that 
if you work for something, right, you can get that thing. Right. You just have to work for it. Be willing to put in that. What was rule number two? Rule number two was anything that I do, I have to do it to the best of my ability. Right. Okay. So let's 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 now take both of those rules yeah. and flow it into your de- decision making. You were the arguably the best sailor. Yes. So I. I I started competition sailing when I was I was oh, around a black man. Yeah. Uh, as a pro, see, you guys saw pro sports. You thought I meant basketball and football. Yeah, didn't yeah. You? So a pro pro sailor, S A I L. Yeah. Like so sailor. I was a sailor, like yeah. sailing, right. like um. Yeah, I became the top sailor in the British Virgin Islands. You know, I traveled all over the place. You know, between went to Singapore, Canada, Florida, you name it. We were all over. We we spent a lot of time in Puerto Rico doing regattas and what's not. I became, and you had a scholarship. And I, and I ended up getting a scholarship. Yeah. And this happened a few months before my high school graduation. Actually, I had, you know, this, this reporter had came from overseas and she was on our boat. We were on a crew boat and I was the skipper of the boat. And I won this regatta and she was very impressed by my, by my skills. And she connected me to this school and they ended up offering me a full ride scholarship. But, you know, that was a time right around when I started taking engineering serious and... This know, is a very important part of the, of the lesson yeah, that people know. Yeah. Most black... So by the way, this created a little bit of a loving, positive conflict in this family. Parts of his family wanted him to take the scholarship, yeah. understandably so. Right. That's what I call the surviving side of the family. It comes yeah. in my new book. They're yeah. like, look, I, life's been so hard for me. If you got somebody paying you for education, exactly. just go take it, right? Exactly. I mean, who's going to give you a scholarship again? Otherwise, you got to pay for it. Then yeah. the other part of your family... So your mom was saying what? So my mom was like, no, 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 no. Do what you want to do. Do what sh- what makes you happy. So she... Which might not have been the sailing piece. No, because what I realized at that point, I realized that I loved sailing, but I loved doing it for fun. Right. I, that, and, and that, I mean, I, I, you said this to me, I thought this was so, so mature. Didn't yeah. you tell me you had figured out early on that you couldn't become a professional sailor for the rest of your life yeah i couldn't i couldn't see it that doesn't pay you a salary yeah and i couldn't see it you know there there were there are a few routes that you can go you know you can do the volvo ocean race you could do the america's cup or i could move back home and be like a charter captain right you know all of which you can make decent money doing either of those things but i just didn't see myself in any of those roles. Right. I mean, it would have been nice to experience, but I couldn't see myself living the rest of my life doing that. And it's not recession proof. It's not recession proof. It's not bulletproof. proof. It's you know, not, it requires ancillary income from whoever's and, doing and it. And to your point, a few years ago, we had a major hurricane, Hurricane Irma, yeah. that kind of put a dampen on that market for a while. So if I was a skipper back home for a while, I would have been out of work. Yeah. You know, um, whereas entertainment will always live on. So, let's, so now let's flip to entertainment. So yeah. now... He's uh, 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 he's doing some hip hop because he loves music, like black all black men love music, yeah, right. and he's he's hanging with some guys doing hip hop. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I if I heard this, remember the story right, yeah, you became a bit more fascinated with what was going on with the engineering. Yeah, world. Okay, I, tell I became extremely fascinated. Like, you know, I was just like, man, like this is so cool. I can manipulate the voice. I can, you know, just I can create whatever I want to create as far as audio goes and I was like this is so awesome and at the time I didn't really think anything about it I was just like this is cool I love doing this I, I can sit for hours and do this thing and I'll do it I, I would do it for free and yeah. to me that was the key I would do it for free because you're passionate about it because I'm passionate about it and then I found out about this school by the name of Full Soul University and me and my mom her being who she is again she was like let's go let's go take a tour we went and we took a tour we both fell in love. She so was your like, mom engaged in your life. Yeah, a hundred percent. Right, right. A hundred percent. Took a tour. Fell in love with it. Fell in love with it, and you know that's when I had those options: the scholarship on one hand, full ride scholarship, yep. and then you know, student loan debt. <laughs> right. Going, going and doing the thing that I love. Right. Um, and what ended up happening is, you know, a lot of teachers, some family members, of course, they would like take the scholarship, but you know, I just had that thing inside of me that was like, no, 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 no. This is, I need to do this for me. I know what I need to do. I know what I see. So I already saw that I was going to be in the place that I am now. You know, even though, like I was telling you earlier, I'm so far from from where I see myself being. But I knew it would work out. I knew it would work out if I just followed through. Because I I knew I had the work ethic to do it. I knew that I wasn't going to waste my time. I knew that I was going to dedicate the time necessary to get the skills so I ended up doing it. Um, and the part of the story that I actually didn't tell you mm. 
is I wasn't the best student in high school. Right. But because I knew that I wanted to prove a point and I knew I wanted to do something special and make this thing work. Yeah. I went to university and I graduated Sal of my class. Um, you know, so I did that. And so you basically have an engineering, the equivalent of an engineering degree just for the layman's for audio, term, yeah. for audio engineering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me, let me, let me Elliot hyphen Emmy, let me, <laughs> I, I, I speak proper English, but I'm saying this intentionally. Let me explain, <laughs> explain what I just described here. He, he, the brother is bulletproof economically. He'll be a, he'll have a, a career and a job for the rest of his life. Anything with the word engineering in it, right? In the world we live in today, yeah, it's a job for life, and I mean a well-paying one. So just to kind of cut to the end here, because mm -hmm. I really want you guys all to appreciate the story, is he can't he made this choice. All his other boys. You know, family wanted him to go do the scholarship thing and whatever. Yeah. Some other people were like, let's do some music. Right. And he cut through all that noise and saw this, this gold mine yeah. that no one else was doing mm -hmm. called engineering, audio engineering. Right. When got his education, paid for it. I said that that is uh, college education today, student loan debt's like somebody's mortgage today. Mm -hmm. Like that, you could get a mortgage for a house and build wealth there. Right. Or you could put, invest in your own education and build wealth there. Right. So he came to work at this company called, can I say it? Of course you can say it. Listen Up Audio. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, uh, he's been here for almost a decade, you know, yeah. a little like that, but he's a chief engineer. He's a, the, I mean, he's, yeah. and he trains other engineers, mm -hmm. and he's been working through the entire pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> With and the I mask think, on. And I think, yeah, and I think that's the beautiful thing. You know, obviously there's pros and cons to working through a pandemic, but I think, the pro in it is in a pandemic where the world is shut down, people need entertainment. People want to consume content, especially in this digital age. So our job became that much more important because audiobooks went up, podcasting went up. You know, all of these things require somebody like me. Yep. You know, especially if you want to do it on a high level and yep. you want your quality to be at a high level, you need somebody like me to help you facilitate that. And, you know, I've, we've, not just me, my entire because I have a full engineering team, my entire team, the ones who are comfortable being here, have been working throughout the entire pandemic also. And everybody, keep in mind, all these folks working from home now, right? They are not. They don't have studios set up. Imagine the business he can start, listen up, I'm not competing with you, but you, you, you're lucky to have him. Imagine the business he can start five years from now, yeah. uh, uh, where he could be servicing all of these people at home, helping them set up home studios. Yeah. I'm just, hey, look, that's a business for somebody watching this here. Yeah. My point is, some people who are in music, hip hop and rap, sitting at home now. If you were just a performer or whatever, you got nothing to do. Right. If you were, if he had become a sailor, he'd be sitting on a dock somewhere right. with no income. Yeah. You know, the whole world's changed. Mm -hmm. But but you cannot grow, be a growth organization or company today and not be invested in technology. Mm -hmm. Technology is everywhere. If you're a church, you need technology. You 100%. need a nonprofit. You need technology. Whatever your business is. Mm -hmm. So he's in the space. Yeah. Of the future, and he's got a knowledge yes. that will pay dividends forever. And ladies, I think he's single. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> okay, so you know, you want a brother, a brother with a good credit score. <laughs> he's got good value. Uh, he's in good health, yeah. and he's got a net worth and a job. So, like he, you know, talk about making smart, sexy. So, look, uh, Dante, God Thank bless you. Good, sir, man. Any, Thank you. Want, any, any uh, go away message for people man, out there I, about? I just want to say, follow your gut, man. You know, you know what you want to do. You know, as crazy as it may seem, you know, maybe it might not even be something that that on paper looks good and that might seem like it pays a lot of money. You can become very good at it and figure out how to make it what you need it to be to support your lifestyle or whatever. Just do what your heart calls you to do. And, you know, shout out people like my mom, people like I had a music teacher who also wanted me to, you know, go with my heart. Shout out to people like that in our lives who, you know, give us that that sound advice, man, you know. Even though I already knew what I was going to do anyway, but it was still helpful to have those people behind of me, and, and, and I'll forever be thankful to them. So shout out to you, Mom. So coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's an Ambassador Young quote. But in the book that I'm doing this audio book for, Up From Nothing, I say that a winner knew he was a winner or she before they won anything. Mm -hmm. Is that what you just heard from him? Yeah. He knew he was a winner. He knew that he'd win at this because it was a passion and he was put, willing to put in the work and he knew he was going to be good at it. Yeah. And, and no one can compete with that. Mm. We're out, John Hope Bryant, Thank Dante. You. Thank Peace you. Light. Peace. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. My pleasure. All right.